SEP Fanfic Readings presents Finding Hermione by Ebook Dragon Chapter 5 A Lioness Among the Snakes Friday, September 13th, 2013 Get dressed. We're going out, Draco told Hermione on Friday night as he walked into the study. Nine days had passed since their argument in the dining room. Draco gave her the space she asked for. She had breakfast, lunch, and dinner with him. She went to work and came home, played with Rose, and walked around the park with him. Every night she sat in front of the fire, reading in her pajamas, or wandering from room to room, aimlessly. She never went to visit her friends, or had them over. He had offered several times to invite Harry and Ginny over. He told her anyone she wanted to invite over was welcome in his home. She always declined. Hermione was curled up on the sofa, reading in her pajamas again. Rose had just been put to bed. What? You can go out if you want to. I don't feel like going anywhere, she answered distractedly. Which is exactly why you're going. I'm not going to let you sit around and wallow in misery. You need to socialize with people other than me. So go get changed or I'll throw you over my shoulder and drag you out in your PJs. What's it going to be? Draco said as he pulled the book from her hands, marked her page, and set it down on the coffee table. She looked so comfortable there on his couch. He felt he needed to take her out, though. She had become too isolated. She seemed to be retreating into herself, becoming more and more depressed as the days wore on. "'I don't want to go out,' Hermione said, her voice so sad and dejected he wanted to give in and let her go back to reading. He sat down beside her on the sofa and took one of her hands in his. "'I know, Hermione. Please, just humor me. I think you need to get out of this house and socialize with people who aren't Rose, Tansy, or me. Just try, and if you don't like it, we can come back home,' he pleaded with her. "'Fine.' "'Where are we going?' Hermione said, resigned. "'The Dragon's Den. Heard of it?' "'No. Really? The Dragon's Den? What kind of name is that?' Hermione laughed at him. "'It happens to be the name of a club I own. Now go get dressed,' Draco said, smiling, pleased to hear her laughing, even if it was at his expense. "'Figures you would name a club after yourself. The Malfoy ego knows no bounds,' she said as she grinned up at him. It was the first smile he had seen in days.' "'Go get changed before I decide that you're going in teddy bear pajamas,' Draco growled at her. Hermione came down a half hour later in a simple black cocktail dress with silver vines embroidered into the V of the neckline. The dress was knee-length and showed off her legs. She had chosen to compliment his silver dress shirt and black slacks. "'Beautiful as always,' he said, as he helped her into her jacket. "'Silver-tongued snake,' she said, smiling up at him. "'Let's go.' He grabbed his own jacket and apparated them to the city center of Cokesworth, just in front of his club. The sign above the club read The Dragon's Den, in silver letters, and had a silverish-blue Swedish short-snout dragon emitting bright blue flames illustrated underneath. She took his arm when they arrived, and he escorted her inside. The main part of the club had a bar along one wall facing the stage where a band was playing. In the middle was a large dance floor littered with dancing couples since it was a Friday night. Arranged along the sides were small tables and chairs. A half wall separated the dance floor from the more private area of the club. Large, rounded booths in black leather surrounded the walls. This area was more for people getting together for drinks to chat. The lighting was low and intimate. Silvery blue wallpaper covered the walls above the booths. The hostess recognized Draco and led them over to a booth where three other couples were already seated, Blaze and Tracy Sabini, Theo and Daphne Knott, and Gregory and Helena Goyle. The Goyle scooted over to make room for Hermione and Draco. Draco took Hermione's jacket and his and handed them to the hostess. "'What are you drinking, Hermione?' Draco asked as the waitress appeared. "'Whatever you're having is fine,' Hermione answered him. Draco ordered them scotch. Hermione seemed to have developed a liking to his favorite alcohol. They shared a glass every night after Rose was put to bed. He didn't get her drunk any more. A glass after dinner was fine, but he knew from experience that it would be too easy to drown your sorrows down a bottle of booze. Draco slid into the booth beside Hermione— he draped an arm over the back of the booth behind Hermione. It was rather crowded now with eight of them seated around the table. Hermione was pressed up against his side. "'We were wondering if you two were going to make it,' Theo commented once they got settled. Draco had vented his worry for Hermione on Theo and Harry. Harry was no help. He was still too upset with Ron and grieving himself. Theo suggested that maybe Hermione have a night out with people who were sympathetic but not as close to the situation as Harry, Ginny, and the Weasley clan were. "'Well, Draco sprung this on me forty-five minutes ago, so if we're late, it's his fault,' Hermione responded dryly. "'You would have found a way not to be available if I'd told you ahead of time,' Draco said to her. 
We're glad you came, Hermione. I love that dress, by the way, Daphne said. You know everyone except Helena there beside you. Helena turned, held out her hand, and introduced herself. Helena was a stout woman with curly black hair, cornflower blue eyes, and a slight overbite. Hello, I'm Helena. I'm a muggle, so that would be why you don't recognize me. But I have heard a lot about you, and it's nice to finally meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Goyle, you married a muggle? Hermione asked in disbelief, leaning around Helena to look at Greg. Yes, Hermione, I, Gregory Goyle, son of Death Eater, married a muggle woman. I saw her in a department store in London, and it was love at first sight. Well, for me at least. She took a little convincing, Greg replied. Well, I'll be damned. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. Do you have any children? Will you all be going to Hogwarts on Saturday for Parents' Day? The rest of the table chuckled when Hermione asked about their children. Greg and Helena had a daughter, who was the same age as Minerva and Scorpius. Why are you lot laughing? Hermione demanded. Well, Hermione, you will be happy to know that you have one more namesake among the dozens of others I'm sure you already have, Greg responded. You named your daughter after me? Why on earth would you torture her with a name no one can properly pronounce? Everyone can pronounce Hermione now. You and your friends came back and saved us. You could have let Draco and I burn that day, but you didn't. You risked your own lives to save two people who had never said a nice thing to you. I don't know if I would have done the same, so naming my daughter after you was the least I could do. If there's ever any way my family or I can help you, you only have to say the word. All of us are here for you to help you through this difficult time. Greg answered her. I'm honored that you would have named your daughter after me. I will forever be eternally grateful that we came back for both of you that day. Oh, thank you, Draco. Draco had handed Hermione his handkerchief, and she dabbed her eyes. You have more people than you know who care about you, and only want to help you find a way for you to be happy again. Draco whispered into her ear. She looked into his eyes and smiled. He smiled back at her. I had a letter from Drake yesterday. He told me all about his housemates. Apparently the children of the Golden Trio are all in Slytherin, Theo commented. Scorpius corrupted them on the train ride. Offered them cookies to join the dark side, Draco joked. Hermione elbowed him in the side. Actually, one of my husband's love children made an ass of himself on the train. He picked on Minerva and Scorpius and tripped Minerva before the sorting. I got the impression that James and Minerva decided it was better to cavort with the snakes than run with the lions. I can't say I blame them. So the prophet actually reported something close to accurate? Blaze asked. Tracy elbowed him in the side. Ow! What is it with you ladies and your well-aimed sharp elbows? Damn it, Blaze, Draco said. Hermione, it is none of our business. You shouldn't feel the need to tell us anything, Tracy said. Draco slid his arm down so that it rested around her shoulders. She relaxed against him. Damn Blaze for bringing up that rag sheet. I'm sorry. I told them not to start questioning you about Weasley. We can go if you're uncomfortable. I'll even hex Blaze a bit if you want. She laced her fingers through the hand that was on her shoulder. No, Draco, I think it might be time I started talking about it. What I've been doing hasn't helped, she said quietly. Then, addressing the rest of the table, Ron has had an ongoing affair with Lavender Brown for most of our marriage, and four children with her, and obliviated me to keep me from finding out. He would have done it again if not for Draco. No, I'm not going back to him. Yes, I plan on getting a divorce somehow. Yes, I know it's not done in the wizarding world, but I don't give a damn, and I deserve better than being forced to stay married to that two-timing bastard. Hermione related the story succinctly. The rest of the table erupted. Everyone spoke at once. What? Blaze yelled. That bastard! Daphne cried and pounded the table with a fist. Let me kill him, Greg growled. Divorce the bastard. He doesn't deserve you, Helena said a little more calmly than the rest. All true, and I'm afraid no, you can't kill him, Greg. Thanks for the offer, though. How are you handling all of this, Hermione? Tracy asked. Tracy had always been the more sensitive one of the group, a good balance to Blaze's brashness. I don't know. It's hard. He was my husband. I'm angry and hurt because he cheated and lied all those years. I keep thinking that there's so much of my life that could have been different if he had just been honest in the beginning. I would have let him go if he had just told me that he wanted to be with her. I'm so angry that he manipulated me into staying with him all those years, not to mention using a memory spell to do it. He knew what it cost me to save my parents during the war, and to use the same spell to manipulate me, it's unforgivable. I could forgive the cheating and lying eventually. I wouldn't have stayed with him, but I would have forgiven him for the sake of our daughters. 
We weren't happy together. I just don't understand why he would hang on like that when we were miserable together. Or why he felt he should be able to have us both. I knew we were miserable together, but I didn't understand until this happened why I stayed with him. It's sad that this is what our relationship came to. I loved him. Maybe not in the way I should have. He was my best friend. He was someone I felt safe with. I'm so sad about all the wasted time I spent being miserable with him. I could have been with someone that loved me. Now what am I? I'm a pathetic, jilted wife of a man who cheated and abused her for years. Hermione turned and buried her face in his chest. Draco wrapped his arm around her and hugged her tight. She had finally given voice to the feelings that had plagued her for days. Maybe now she could purge those negative feelings and start the healing process. You aren't pathetic. You've been so strong, he said against her hair. I'm really sorry this happened to you, Hermione. You didn't deserve it. I don't think anyone does. But I hope that in the end it's okay that it did. You deserve to be happy. And if being with Ron didn't make you happy, then it's good that you found out. You get a chance to make a happier life for yourself, Daphne said. We're here for you, though, Hermione. We're glad that you agreed to come out with Draco tonight. Being around people is good for you, so any time you need girlfriends, we're here for you. Bring Ginny, too. I know she's probably having a hard time with this, too, said Tracy. I think I've been a terrible friend, though. I haven't even talked to Harry and Ginny. I haven't even thought about what they must be going through, Hermione said, drying her eyes. Draco let go of her, and she settled back against his side. They don't blame you for taking time for yourself, Draco said. Hermione looked up at him, curiously, and he shrugged a shoulder. Harry comes to see me every couple days to see how you're doing. Thank you. Draco nodded and went to pull his arm off her shoulder and settled it back on the edge of the booth, but Hermione held on to the hand that she was holding, so he stopped and let her have her way. So, I think we should all get together tomorrow and have a picnic by the lake with the children. Blaze and I will bring dessert, Daphne said, trying to change the subject to less serious topics. It's a good idea. I have an outdoor blanket with an extendable charm on it. We can also bring the sandwiches, Hermione volunteered for her and Draco. We'll bring the drinks, Tracy said. That leaves us with sides, said Helena. Great, that's settled. Helena, did Hogwarts send you a visibility charm? Hermione asked. Hogwarts was invisible to muggles in order to keep the secrecy of the school and the existence of the wizarding world. However, exceptions had started being made after the war. It had been decided that it wasn't right that muggle-born children wouldn't be able to have their parents come to see them at school, while wizarding parents were able to visit. "'Yes, I got a letter in the mail with Myony's letter,' Helena answered Hermione. "'Greg, you should take her on the boat across the lake for the first time over. See Hogwarts the same way we all did the first time,' Hermione suggested, leading forward to Greg. "'Oh, that's a good idea, Hermione,' Daphne said, looking excited. "'What do you think, Helena?' Tracy asked. "'Sounds magical,' Helena replied. "'It really is, especially if you didn't grow up surrounded by magic. "'I'll send a letter to Hagrid so he can have a boat ready for you,' Hermione offered. "'Heads up. Rita Skeeta is headed this way,' Blaze said suddenly. Draco straightened and reluctantly took his hand off Hermione's shoulder, "'but kept his arm draped across the top of the booth behind her. "'Rita Skeeter walked over in a garish, green robes, purple, jeweled glasses, "'and a blue hat with bright red feathers sticking out of it. "'Interesting that you are already out on the town with another man "'so soon after learning of your husband cheated on you for years. "'Care to comment on the state of your relationship with Ronald Weasley? "'How are your daughters taking the news? "'Are you a Draco Malfoy in a relationship?' Rita said nastily. "'I have a comment for you, Rita. "'Beetles are easily squished,' Hermione said maliciously, "'pointing her wand at Rita. "'Draco burst out laughing at Hermione's comment. "'Blaze escorted Rita out of the bar "'with terse instructions that she never be allowed back in.' "'Beetles are easily squished. Have you gone mental, Hermione? What kind of a comment is that?' Blaze asked as he returned to the booth. "'Rita is an unregistered animagus. Hermione trapped her in a jar at the end of fourth year, and has blackmailed her over the years about it,' Draco said, still chuckling. Some of them already knew about Rita Skeeter's publishing lies, with some help from Draco. He related the story to Helena and Hermione's part in getting back at the woman. "'Are oh, you sure you got sorted into the right house, Hermione?' Theo laughed. Well, the Sorting Hat did seriously consider putting me in Ravenclaw before it decided on Gryffindor, but I'm sure that's not what you meant, Hermione replied with a bland smile. I also sent centaur figurines to Umbridge when she got sentenced to Azkaban, Hermione added deviously. Why? Helena asked. Do you know anything about Dolores Umbridge? Hermione asked. Helena shook her head. 
Well, she was this toad of a woman who terrorized the students with some misguided help during our fifth year. Greg made to interrupt and apologize. It's all right. Order under the bridge, she said to him, as she squeezed Draco's thigh to let him know she meant him as well. She left her hand there as she continued her story. Anyway, she was going to use the Cruciatus Curse, which is an unforgivable curse used to torture people, on Harry, and I wasn't going to allow my friend to be tortured if I could help it. So I told her that we were trying to find Dumbledore to let him know that the weapon was ready. She insisted that we take her to it. There was no weapon, of course. I led her into the Forbidden Forest, trying to make enough noise that something would come and check it out. We lucked out that it was the centaurs. I knew she would piss them off. Centaurs are very proud creatures, and are easy to offend. Well, they drove her off, and we made our escape. Dumbledore had to go in and rescue her. I sent her a centaur as a reminder that her prejudice got her in trouble once, and she had the opportunity to change, but she wasted it. And now she's paying for it in jail. She got a life sentence in Azkaban for helping Voldemort target Muggleborns. You should have seen her, too. Hermione was so convincing about it, crying and everything. I tried keeping Umbridge from going with her and Harry, but it was like a kid in chocolate. Just too tempting to resist, Draco commented. Your insistence on going with her is what decided her against letting you go. You both played right into my hands. You really are a brilliant, devious witch, aren't you? I almost feel sorry for Weasley. He won't know what hit him once we're all through with him, Theo said. Remind me never to piss Hermione off, Blaze said sardonically. Hermione, you have great stories. Let's do this again soon, Helena said. Yes, it's getting late, and we should all get going. We have to be at Hogwarts early tomorrow, said Daphne. Hermione, we meant what we said. Let's get together for girls' night soon. They said goodbye and apparated to their homes after they left the bar. Draco put an arm around Hermione's waist as he guided her out of the club and apparated them home. Hermione hugged Draco. She pulled back a little, but still had her hands on his chest. His were on her waist. Thank you for taking me. You were right. I needed to get out. It ended up being fun. Draco tucked a stray curl behind her ear. You're welcome. They really liked you, and they really meant what they said. They all want to be here for you. I think you made Helena feel more comfortable. I think she's always felt a little on the outside. We don't mean to make her feel that way, but we all grew up together. Plus, she's not magical, so everything we take for granted is very different for her. Thank you for sharing your friends with me. It means a lot. They're your friends now, too. I'm going to see if Tansy is still awake and ask her if she'll make us some sandwiches for tomorrow. I'll go check on Rose, then head to bed. Good night, Draco. Good night, Hermione. He pulled her in for one more hug. He felt her hands glide down his chest as she pulled away from him. She turned and walked up the stairs to go check on Rose. He stood at the foot of the stairs, watching her go. Watching her at the club was like seeing the bit of the old Hermione back again. She finally opened up about what she was feeling the last couple days. He worried that he had broken her trust irrevocably that night in the dining room. He was glad the evening had gone well. She really would have made a great Slytherin. He grinned to himself as he made his way to find Tansy.